Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a look at a couple of new products that I'm pretty excited about. This is from To-Go Power. This is their advanced 100 watt solar panel that's going to look very familiar once I get it out and show it to you. And this is also their A650 power station, which I have not unboxed yet and we're going to take a look at that uh, in just a second. But we're going to find out here if my excitement about these products is warranted or not. Let's see. As I mentioned in my previous video that I posted, which was also about a power station from Headwolf, um, I do get a lot of uh, offers to review product and I, I turn most of them down. What I'm looking for at this point, because I certainly don't need any more power stations in my life, uh, but I feel like the more I'm able to bring alternatives to you if you're interested in that kind of thing, um, then if I have the opportunity to do that, great. But what I'm looking for are things that are different than things that I have reviewed previously. And this is another one of those cases. Uh, when To-Go Power reached out to me, I was very excited when I looked at the specs on this thing because it has several things that are different than some of the other products that I have reviewed. So let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. Uh, we'll look at the solar panel in just a second. All right, got a user guide. There's the unit, A650. I'm guessing this is our cables. Let's see which cables we get. All right, we've got a standard charge cable for the AC charge brick. Here is a, okay, so this is a, an MC4 connector to, uh, it looks like an eight millimeter barrel connector. And then we've got the eight millimeter barrel connector to a 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter. So it's kind of the standard ones. You can plug it, uh, charge it from the AC outlet, you can charge it from a solar panel. I'm assuming that's primarily what this is for. Uh, and then you can charge it from your 12 volt uh, adapter in your car. So this is the unit. First of all, I really like this rugged case. This is uh, bright yellow. You're not gonna lose this thing in the dark. Uh, but this, this really feels like a, a very solid kind of ABS plastic case. Um, able to withstand a beating, it sort of feels like to me. Let me take a look at what's in the solar panel. All right, so we've got an MC4 connector to an Anderson connector, which means that the native connector uh, from the uh, solar panel is an Anderson connector. And it does have a type C and a type E. So it's got two USBs, a C and an A. And the module, the pouch itself is waterproof with a waterproof zipper. Um, but in addition to the MC4, so um, I think what what this is good for is if you've got like an MC4 splitter to allow you to combine um, panels, this would be a way that you could add that to uh, an MC4 splitter. Or there's actually, yes, the MC4 cable from the power station itself. You could use that to go in there and this takes you to the eight millimeter side to go in there. Um, there's another way to do that too. They also give you uh, this multi-headed splitter cable. So it's got the standard eight millimeter. It's got a 5.5 millimeter. It's got a, an aviation style connector uh, for you uh, Blue Eddy users. I know, I think Blue Eddy uses a lot of these aviation styles and it goes to an Anderson. So the Anderson would connect back to the panel directly. And then this should, should get you to pretty much anything that you've got on the market. So uh, really impressed with uh, everything that they give you in this kit and uh, let's jump forward and find out how the testing goes. See you in about two seconds. And we're back. So it's been about three weeks since the clip you just saw. And by the way, I'm partially colorblind and I do my own video editing. So if the colors are a little strange, my fault and I'm sorry. Uh, but I really do like this thing. So I've had a pretty good chance to run it through its paces and uh, kind of figure out what it's all about. That said, let's jump into the basic specs. So this is, as I mentioned, probably maybe 500 watt continuous power draw up to a thousand watts peak, but that's only for a few seconds before this thing will eventually complain and shut down. It has a 634 watt hour capacity. The DC input on here is uh, maxed out at, at, a, at 100 watts. All the other 100, or 500 watt units that I've seen have the same spec. Um, but just be aware of that. If you intend to hook uh, two, you know, 200 watts of uh, solar input to this, just be aware that under the best conditions, you're only going to get 100 watts input uh, through this particular DC input port. It does have three QC or quick charge 3.0 
uh, type A USB port. So the USB ports are right here under this uh, cover. All the ports are covered, which is nice. And then it's got a uh, PD 60 watt single direction type C port. This type C port is output only. So just be aware of that. 12 volt cigarette lighter on here is uh, in fact regulated. So it's safe for uh, 12 volt refrigerators. Uh, comes with a 12 month warranty. Um, also, some of the other cool things on this, these were the standouts. It does have Qi charging. So that's a 10 watt Qi charger. You can drop your phone on there. Uh, the other thing I really like about this is the lights. Um, there's a light switch up here on the handle. And so if I press it once, you get the light on the side uh, and then if you press it again, you get the one on the handle. And what I like about the one on the handle is that, you know, you can tilt the handle. So you can you, you can actually light your space by just kind of tilting this up and projecting the light upward. I actually really like this. This makes the light a lot more usable, at least the way that I would use it. I also like the fact that you can put the handle all the way down and it's recessed into the top. And so now this is flat. It does make it easier to pack away and stow, and you know, and stack things around it when you're not using it. Um, uh, because it doesn't have that sort of rounded handle on top that a lot of the units do. So I kind of like the ergonomics of this thing and I like how ruggedly it's built. So I think that's about all for the basic specs to cover. Uh, let's go ahead and jump forward and look at some of the testing that I did on this thing and see how that went. All right, we've got a nice uh, bright sunny day. It's about uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, I would guess. And you can see not really any clouds overhead, very bright sun. So let's go ahead and hook up this to-go power uh, 100 watt solar panel to the advanced A650 power station and see what kind of output we're getting under these conditions. I like that there's a lot of angle flexibility in this particular panel. You can lay it very flat so when the sun's high in the sky, you can maximize the uh, alignment. All right, we are using the uh, Anderson to multi-tipped adapter. Plug that into this little input up here. And let's see what we got. And make sure there's no shadows. But you can see that nice ETFE coating on there. Alright, so we're shadow free. And we're getting pretty respectable 86 watts. Alright, as you can see, that was pretty easy to set up. It pretty much sets up just like the Jackery Solar Saga 100. Uh, with just the two legs. Um, I will say that this is a little bit easier to adjust flatter than the Jackery is, and it will uh, pack up just as easily as the Jackery does. Here's another common use here for these things. Got my 12 volt, 48 quart uh, new air refrigerator in here. Now that I've got the car running and I've got the refrigerator up to target temperature, you can see the compressor is actually not running and I'm only drawing two watts and I've got 58 watts being input from the car. Yeah, one of the questions I often get, and I mentioned this in the video that I did on the refrigerator, is if I have a 12 volt refrigerator, um, not only how long can I run it off of a power station, but um, could I run this pretty much indefinitely if I'm able to solar charge the power station in between uh, times when you know the sun is not out? And the answer is yes, you can absolutely do that. I actually did the math on this. I'll go ahead and explain that data for you off camera and uh, we'll take a look at the spreadsheet. You can see how that works. All right, so I whipped up a quick spreadsheet here to kind of show you if I was running something like the New Air 48 quart 12 volt fridge off a portable power station, and I compared the Jackery 1000 and the Togo Power A650, and basically what the spreadsheet shows here is that uh, in capacity in terms of watt hours, the Togo Power has a 634 watt hour capacity. The Jackery has just over 1,000. Now I used a kilowatt style watt meter uh, for a 24 hour period running the refrigerator. If I average the hourly watt draw, it was 16.7 watts over a 24 hour period per hour. So that would give me 60 hours runtime or two and a half days on a thousand watt capacity power station, uh, just off battery, no solar recharging at all. And on something in the medium range like this to go power A650, I could get over a day and a half of runtime strictly off the power station for that refrigerator freezer combo. In terms of solar recharge time, in other words, the time to replenish the power that the refrigerator is using in that 16 hour period that we're assuming here, the refrigerator is gonna run on battery power only. Then that time, if I have a single panel that's averaging about 85 watts input per hour, 
then if I subtract out the hourly watt draw from the fridge, which is 16.7 on average, that gives me a net input gain of 68 watts into my power station. So at that input range, it would take me 3.9 hours to replace the energy used by the refrigerator in that 16 hour period. And, and this goes the same for either one of these power stations, right? Because the, the amount of power being drawn out doesn't change. It's just what is the capacity. So one thing you definitely want to keep in mind though, is if you've got a power station in this 500 watt range, uh, most of these are capped out on the DC input side at about 100 watts. So while you can use a couple of solar panels, you're, you're still not going to get more than 100 watts input uh, typically from this class of power station. You can definitely sustain uh, use on these kinds of uh, refrigerators uh, with a power station like the A650. I would not use a, a power station below the 500 watt range because the refrigerator will probably trip the... Uh, overcurrent protection on the smaller uh, power stations, but anything in that 500 watt and up should be totally fine. So hopefully you got a good feel for kind of how this thing works in everyday use. Just kind of talk about kind of what, what is a 500 watt class of uh, power station good for? Well, you know, you can run electric blankets with this thing. They don't draw all that much power. You could run it all night if you wanted. We only run it for typically for a couple of hours and then we shut it off. Um, a CPAP machine, you could probably get a full eight hours of this, kind of depending on the CPAP machine. So you'd want to see what kind of power draw if you use one of those. Uh, I don't, but uh, the ones that I've seen should last a pr pretty solid eight hours on a 500 watt or 600 watt hour capacity type unit. You could actually power a 65 inch widescreen TV with a satellite sound system on it. Um, I actually did that with this guy, but it, I mean, it only draws about 150 watts max. Uh, and so you could get approximately three hours and 45 minutes, maybe four hours um, out of this thing running that type of uh, home entertainment setup. Now the obvious use case for this is, is for charging all of your mobile devices, so whether that's phones, tablets, laptops, uh, cameras, drones, all of that stuff, very well suited to charge all of those things. And as I showed, you can easily use this thing to, to power a 12 volt refrigerator. And so hopefully that spreadsheet made sense to you. I, probably already over explained it. But anyway, if you have any questions about the general functionality of this thing and its capabilities, feel free to leave those in the comments below. I'll be happy to try and read those comments and answer them if uh, if I can. Let's talk about the pros and cons from my perspective on this. Uh, the pros really dramatically outweigh the cons. In fact, there was only one real con that I could come up with uh, and it was pretty minor. It doesn't support uh, dual channel charging. So I can't charge it through the type C port and the AC or the DC input port at the same time. Um, in fact, as I mentioned before, you can't charge it through the PD60 uh, port at all. So it's just output only. Um, so when you're charging this thing, you can get power, you can be powering anything through the USB ports, the uh, DC ports like the 12 volt, uh, and also the AC inverter, you can run all of that. Um, some of the units like Rock Palace, for example, don't allow you to uh, power devices through the AC port while you're charging through the DC port. So this thing does AC and DC, which is really nice. I find that the LCD uh, screen on this is is actually pretty nice. It's a little bit recessed. I guess this would be the only other con. And again, this is so petty, I feel kind of ridiculous mentioning it. The way that this uh, housing is designed, it's, it kind of sets out, it kind of protrudes past the front panel. So you, you kind of have a hard time seeing the top of the LCD panel unless you kind of get, get down and look at it directly on. Um, now, one of the things that I do like about this LCD screen though, um, this is also like on the Jackeries, it does have a backlight that you can turn on. Um, and as you can see, the backlight is on now. But even when the backlight goes out, you can still look and see the status without the backlight, provided you have enough ambient light. And with the LED uh, control panel screens that you see on some of these other ones, while it is nice to have that kind of bicolor design, um, they have to shut the whole display down in order to preserve battery life after a timeout period. And so you can't kind of look at a glance and see how you're doing. You have to reactivate the screen. So this is one thing I do like about the LCD versus the LED. Now there is a, a kind of a variable speed fan in this unit and it will kick on once you're drawing somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 watts or so of output. And it's uh, fairly quiet. I mean, I, it's, it's as quiet or quieter than the other units I've got. So, you know, they, it just feels like a, a really well thought out, well engineered power station. I mean, even the even this this grip has a little bit of a rubberized uh, surface on the bottom, so that when you're carrying it around, it doesn't slip out of your hand. Um, it's just little stuff like that, and the fa in, you know little design things like the choice to put the the light in the handle. 
I think were just really uh, thoughtful design choices. Just a couple of quick comments about the solar panel itself. Here's a solar panel. Um, it is virtually identical in dimension to the Jackery Solar Saga 100. It even has these, you know, magnetic clasps that the uh, Solar Saga has, but it has Anderson native output, Anderson connector outputs on the native cable that's integrated in the, in the bag. But you get all the adapters you could possibly want between this and that. Uh, it's gonna fit anything that you need to hook this up to. So in, in conclusion, I would just say, I, I really feel like the to-go power A650 is really well made. I think it probably deserves to be on your short list. It is a solid uh, portable power station. And I think their 100 watt solar panel is also a, a solid choice if you wanna take a look at that. You can go to togopower.com. I'll leave the links in the description below if you wanna check that out. If you think you're gonna pull the trigger on one of these, don't forget to use the promotional code RERAY, R-E-E-W-R-A-Y and for that uh, discount that I mentioned earlier in the video. So that's all I got for you on this one. If you found any of this information useful, I would appreciate that thumbs up, super helpful. And uh, I guess I will just uh, leave it at that and let you go. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, have fun out there.